This is a method for tying a real bow in clo that I've developed that is similar to tying a knot and just as easy. If you'd rather fake a bow, then there's a clo video linked below for that. And there's also a clo video linked below for tying a knot. With tying things in clo, it can seem overwhelming at first and really difficult. But once you know the right settings for collision thickness and particle distance and the method, it's really just about practicing. Once you get comfortable, it becomes much easier. So here I have my ties as separate pattern pieces, which will just make things easier. And I wanna point out that my garment is in low res, so 20 particle distance and 2.5 collision thickness, which is the default. Your small pattern pieces like collars and plackets can still be set to five particle distance, but everything should have 2.5 collision thickness. Then on your ties, you need to be sure that those are set to at least five particle distance, if not a little bit smaller. And we're going to set the collision thickness on your ties up to four. The reason for this is you don't want your garment to slow your computer down by having it in higher resolution than you need, but it's really important for the ties to have a low particle distance so that they don't pull through each other. And the higher collision thickness also creates a bit of a buffer. So when you're tying the bow, they're not wanting to pull through each other. As you can see, I've simulated my ties to let them fall down and they are moving super slow because of the low particle distance. So if you wanted to do this beforehand and then change your particle distance, that's probably wise. You want to make sure your ties are lying flat because we're going to fold them up and sew them to themselves. I start by using strengthening to help, which you can access by right clicking and strengthening or it's control H and command L. Mine are still a bit twisted, so I just use my pin box tool and double click the ends of my bow to put pins all the way across that bottom edge. If you left click the pins, you get your gizmo and you can twist them around and manipulate them. I ended up just putting them back in 20 particle distance to make this go faster. Before we move on, I recommend that your ties are symmetric patterns. If they're not, just delete one and right click on the other and clone symmetric pattern with sewing. Now we're gonna click on the tie in 3D about how long you want the loops to hang down. You'll get your blue dot in 2D to tell you where you are on the pattern. And then we'll grab our internal polygon tool and draw a line about where that blue dot is. Now we're gonna fold the tie in 3D. So if you don't have your internal lines showing, turn them on here and grab your fold arrangement tool Click the line and turn to the side until you can see the circle and you'll just slide the green arrow up, making sure you don't go too far where the tie is overlapping itself. Now we're gonna sew these two pieces together, basically sew our loop shut. So with free sewing, I'm gonna sew from my internal line to the end of my pattern and then from my internal line again to my blue dot. And you'll see that sewing my loop shut. I'll do the same at the top and bottom of the pattern. Then with edit sewing, select both sets of sewing and turn them in the property editor. Now I'll select my body and sleeve patterns and right click in 3D to freeze. I don't wanna freeze my collar because it needs to move as I tie my bow. Now you can simulate and let your tails fall. You wanna keep the part of your garment that hits the bow frozen, but if you're having any computer speed issues, you can select the other patterns that don't touch the bow and deactivate them instead of freezing them. I'm going to unfreeze my plackets as well because I want them to be able to move as I tie my bow. We're going to start the bow by grabbing our pin box and we're going to put pins on the ends of our loops and the ends of our ties. So you're just going to marquee in 2D. The ends of the loops is going to be right over that internal line that we folded and the ends of the tie will be the outside ends of my pattern. It just depends on how you lay your pattern out in 2D. Make sure that you're not holding shift while you do this because you want four separate sets of pins. The way pins work is you left click to select them and get your gizmo. You need to turn simulation on and then you're able to move the set of pins while simulation is on using your gizmo. So I want the tails to be hanging down below my bow or to the inside. So I'm gonna start by pulling my bows out and making sure that the loops are on the top. So if you use this screen coordinate gizmo like I do, that means that everything moves based on your 
your perspective. No matter which gizmo you use, you want to make sure you're rotating around in 3D a lot to know exactly where you are and what things are doing so that you don't run things into each other. You can use any of the lines on the gizmo to go up, down, left, right, forward, or backwards. If you just click and drag with your hand, it's the same as using the yellow square on the gizmo. And then if you want to rotate, use the circles and they'll rotate in the direction that they're drawn. Once you have your bows on the outside and your tails in the middle, you can right click to delete the pins on the tails. So basically we're going to tie our bows, which are sewn shut, just like we would tie a knot. So the first step will be to cross them over each other and it doesn't matter which one is on top. Then we're gonna need to place some pins so that we can keep a hole here to be able to pull one end through. So whenever you're trying to place pins, I always click in 3D to get my blue dot so I know where I am on my 2D pattern and then I marquee in 2D to place my pins. So you'll add pins to both sides and then you'll use those to widen the hole. Now you just need to decide if you wanna pull the top loop down and up through the hole or the bottom loop up and down through the hole. It doesn't matter which, but whichever one you choose, you'll need to secure it just before it crosses the other one with some pins. With everything secure, you can begin pulling the tail through the hole. If your computer is powerful enough, now might be a good time to put your particle distance down even a little bit lower than five. Remember you need to be changing your perspective a lot to make sure you're not pulling the end of the bow into other pattern pieces. Eventually you'll get to a place like I am here where some of the pins that we've used to secure things are pulling the bow too tight. So I need to start deleting some of these pins to release them as I pull my bow tighter. Make sure the end of your bow is far enough through the hole that you don't cause yourself any problems by deleting some pins. You can also pull it a bit further after you start to release some of the slack. Right click and delete selected pin to delete pins. Once you've deleted all the pins except for the ends, you're just gonna pull the two ends out until everything's pretty taut. You can see here I couldn't quite figure out which direction to pull the two ends, so I just fixed it when it didn't look right. So this is about as tight as I'll pull my ends for now. And I've realized that the tops of my plackets are kind of folded back underneath my bows. So I'm gonna use some pins on the corner of the plackets to fix this. Before we release the ends of our bow and before I fix my placket, you should use the tack tool to tack bits of your bow together where it's pulled taut here at the sort of knot area. So the way the tack tool works, you just click once on a piece of fabric and click again for the area that you wanna tack it to. I won't spend too much time on the issue of my plackets, but I just use my pins to move them over and strengthening to help me get them to lie flat. Once you've tacked your knot a couple of times, you can delete the pins from your tails and simulate and let those fall down. Before letting the bows fall, I suggest using the pins on the end to get them down close to where they would be so they don't have as far to fall. Then you can delete the pins and delete the sewing and simulate the bows. If you need to use strengthening for any collision issues with the bow, you can do so, but just remember that it's also gonna strengthen within the knot, so just be careful that that doesn't cause you any problems. A lot can be accomplished in the styling using your hand tool or just repositioning your tacks. Now you can delete your fold line and we're gonna begin stepping our collision thickness down. To be sure your bow doesn't pull through itself, you don't wanna change your collision thickness too much too quickly. So we're gonna step it down slowly, going from four to three and then simulating and making sure everything's okay. Then we can go from three to 2.5, and then you can go from 2.5 down to two. If you wanna go lower than two, remember that high res is one for all pattern pieces, so you can do a test and simulate and see if your bow holds. Otherwise, you can keep it at two, and just make sure if you use the high res garment button that before you simulate, you come back and select your bows and you raise them back up to two. Lastly, if you wanna make any changes to the length of your bow, you can do so with out interfering with the knot. So for the tails, it's easy. You just drag them out with edit pattern from the ends. And with the bows, you wanna make sure you extend here at the loop. So with internal polygon, you can draw a line and right click and choose cut. And then you'll just extend on either side of that line. 
It's probably best to let your bow fall so that each side lies flat before you extend it because the way that it extends in 3D is going to be in the direction that it's going. So just to avoid collision issues, simulate after you cut it apart and let it lie flat and then extend. Then you're going to merge them back together by selecting both sides of that line and right clicking and choose merge. So that way you can adjust lengths without affecting the knot that you've tied.